Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. So, today's Friday. Gotta love Fridays. Um, it's a little bit after 11 o'clock. It is December 5th, Friday. Um, 0.2 degrees Celsius. So right up against freezing there. 34 according to this one. Um, that says my batteries are right on the edge of being charged or charging because both lights are on. You can see it's kind of overcast out. And this one says 32, not being in the, uh, you know, in the light of day. So, what am I up to? Yesterday I got that new toy inverter and I wanted to give it a shot for a few reasons. First of all, there's no use having an inverter in the box that you keep it in there for six months or so and you finally need it, you dig it out of the box, you hook it all up, you find out it's dead and obviously you've owned it for six months so the person you bought it from eBay is no longer. If he was smart, he took your PayPal money, he closed that account and he's elsewhere. So. There's that. Anyway, got it fired up. Um, a few things, trivial, trivial things. Um, but when you buy something, you always kind of want everything to work. Uh, let's see. It came with everything in the box. I don't know if it was an open box situation this guy ended up with or what the story was. Uh, he seemed to have more than one of them. Maybe it was last year's model. Um, it didn't seem to be started. It never had gas in it. It didn't seem to have oil in it or any of the other stuff. It was brandy spanking new, but the top of the box did appear to be opened. It came with um, a bunch of instructions, which, you know, you read the bare minimum of. came with oil, right? I guess they don't want you to overfill it, so they give you exactly what you need. And it came with this really fancy screwdriver. And yes, you could pull it out, and it's a flat blade on the other side. I'm really, really hoping that nobody sees this and has to absolutely have this screwdriver and, you know, travels halfway around the world to take it. But um, really, really great screwdriver there, guys. Gotta love it. And the last thing it came with is um, these jumper cables. For a car battery, I guess it charges car batteries or motorcycle batteries or quad batteries at the rate of 8 amp hours. So what have I done? I've put gas in it, I've put oil in it, and I started it up and I let it run for about an hour with 150 watt load on it. Um, it's supposedly good for 1800 watts running and 2200 starting. So 150 just to break things in, to let the coils warm up a little bit, get in a comfortable position for themselves and all that stuff. You really don't want to slam them when they're brand new because once again, before everything kind of finds its place, gets a little bit annealed, y you know, it might be okay. You might screw something up. A couple of things about generators. New generator, once again, I believe breaking them in slowly. You don't really want to want to, you know, run them all that hard. This is 1800 watts running. I I really personally um if I'm going to work it for a living, I'm probably never really going to go above 1200 watts. I don't know. I I'm not a big believer in running them at the extreme. Um some people could say, oh, you're full of crap, I got a generator, I run like that all the time, good for you, don't want to blow up my generator. Um, just to remind you guys, just in case you didn't bother with yesterday's video, this was an eBay deal. It was a um, make an offer, guy wanted $4.99, I offered him $4.50, he took the $4.50 and it was $36 to ship it, so this was... 486 bucks delivered to the house. If I would have bought it from Home Depot, I might have got a model year newer, but this particular model year was a uh, $599 unit where I am, the sales tax is a little bit over 8%, so let's make it 6 times 8 is 48. So this would have cost me around 650. So, you know, I saved, I don't know, 100 and 60 70 bucks something like that so not bad ebay is wonderful i had been running it so um 
you, you know, turning it to cold start would not be a good thing. I'm going to turn it to run and restart because it's it's still warm. Um, it says on this thing, when you initially put gas in it, initial warning, you might have to pull the string a couple of times. Let's say you got to pull the string close to 50 times to get it to start. What I would do is pull the string a few times and then walk away from it and come back and pull the string another few times and walk away from it. And eventually it finally said, you know what, I'm sick of you pulling on my string, and it fired up. And since then I, you know, restarted it a few times and she fired right back up. So here we are. Let's give it a fire up. It's all this hard. So there it is running. Now I got no load on it, right? None of these light bulbs are lit up. It's telling me it's the best way to do this so that you can see it. So 123.5 volts, pretty solid. Hertz 59.9. Watch this as I put the load on it. Hertz stayed rock solid, not dancing. Voltage 123.1. When I put the load on it, took the load off, put the load on. Voltage hung right in there. Um, this is a much heavier load, obviously. Plug it in. Try not to electrocute myself. Give me one second. I don't know if you guys could see the lights come on, but 122.6 and once again the frequency is bulletproof got to be electronically controlled not governor controlled last test and by the way I got 325 watts on it and here I'm gonna just quickly uh, let's see I guess the next thing I'll do is I'm just going to turn the heater on. I'm going to put the fan on first. I can find the knob, I'll put the fan on first. Oops. There we go, fan on first. You can see only a few watts, no big deal. Purely resistive, so anyway, back to watts. Voltage, right on. Um, I'm about to hit this with a 800 watt load. So, what do we want to look at? Frequency. We could go back to wattage, but let's watch what the voltage does. You can hear the engine strain. See the voltage stay more or less where it needed to be. And the frequency stayed right there. And there's the wattage. 1400 watts, give or take a little bit, 1300. Back to the voltage. Stayed right on the money. I turned the heater off, checked the hertz out.
frequency stayed right where it needed to be. Voltage right there. So there you are. This is what you get with an inverter. You don't have the voltages hopping around, up and down, all over the place. They stay right where they need to stay. Um, tell you what I could do. I'll unplug those lights. The heater is off. Plug this in. Gotta go in that way. And I mean, you can see it has no trouble with it, it just bumps itself up a little, and she's running. Once again, the nice thing about an inverter is your frequency stays right on the money, as does your voltage. It doesn't bounce around. Um, what I'll do, um, I don't know if I'm going to get to it today, um, but I'm going to uh, try my other couple of generators with this test. We'll see how it turns out. Uh, something else, by the way, you, and you could hear about how noisy it is. I mean, we're right up against it. Um, let me just walk a little distance away. Okay, I'm by the uh, PT Cruiser. I don't know, what am I, about 50 feet away from it? That's how loud it is. And, you know, if I kind of... This puts me about a hundred foot away from it. And quite honestly, I could probably sleep through that. At 200 foot, one would hardly hear it. So, the nice thing about an inverter, you get your voltage stays rock solid no matter what your load is until you blow it up obviously your frequency stays rock solid no matter what your load is until you blow it up and those are all good things one other thing I do with the generator a lot of people don't think it's necessary but I do I always remove the load before turning it off um, some folks just say that's an old wise tale, maybe, um, but in the old days, they used to say if you didn't do that, you can lose the magnetism in the generator or um, the spikes of the generator winding down right as you got the load on it uh, could, could kill the generator. Um, and quite honestly, it takes a second to unload it before you shut it off. Might as well do that because who wants to take the chance of blowing up the generator? If I'm right and you don't do it and you blow up your generator, it doesn't do either of us any good for me to be right. You just killed your generator. You're screwed. It's better, I don't know, just take the load off. Um, every once in a while, obviously, folks are going to have... Um, a load on it because you know they're doing what they're doing and it's going to run out of gas not the best thing to do to your generator a couple of things um, uh, annoying thing there's one screw here and there's a missing one here these are not captive screws so when you unscrew them they fall out and if they fall out you lose them when I was working on this thing I had it sitting up here at height and I dropped the screw into this garbage bin I use for moving wood around so someday hopefully I find it in the bottom of the bin when I burn off all that wood um so big things obviously keep your generator full of oil um, fill it up with gas use clean gas put stabilizer in the gas it's really important to use stabilizer in this one because when you turn it off 
it does turn off along with turning off the engine it turns off a fuel valve but it does not run the carburetor out of gas so this generator it's going to be kind of important to start it up once in a while and it's also going to be important um, to use stabilizer in it because you start it up you use it it is hurricane sandy back a few years and then you get the snowstorm like I got and oops it's got bad gas in it and here you are pulling covers off this thing trying to figure out how to fix it by flashlight not a good time not recommend it not a good thing to do so uh, do yourselves a favor favor you stabilizer in the gas how heavy is this um, we just set the camera up it seemed really light to pick up right I mean two fingers If I had a guess, it's between 40 and 50 pounds. It's also got this handle thing. You could pull out and drag it along. I don't know. If you got to take your generator camping so that you could watch satellite TV by moonlight, I guess. Uh, if you're going camping, why do you need a generator? You're going camping. Um, but I guess if you have a uh, RV, it could be helpful. You can, you know, bungee it to the side of the RV so it don't flip over while you're driving somewhere. Then take it out and, you know, roll it behind a rock or something so the noise doesn't bother you. And, you, you know, maybe it should chase away some bear if you hide it behind a rock while you're trying to sleep and watch satellite TV. Okay, folks, thank you for watching and commenting and subscribing. Um, particularly, thanks for all the comments. Thanks for the help. Um, you, there were quite a few comments about what I should do with work. And in my mind, I'm, I'm moving towards something, and I, let's see what they offer, because it doesn't matter where my mind is moving until I actually get a written offer. Um, and once I get a written offer, we'll see what they're throwing around, what I'm throwing around in my head, and we'll go forward uh, from there. Um, so there we are. Guys, uh, feet down, head up, and make sure you enjoy all your days. Bye now.